Hello! In this third tutorial, we're going to actually start creating some content for Google Classroom to distribute to our students. And that's all driven by this little button down here. We can create an announcement, we can create an assignment, we can create questions, and we can reuse a post, which will save you time in the future, because if you need to recover a subject or get the students to redo it, um, and we'll get onto all that kind of stuff a bit later on. Announcements don't have a task attached to them, but the first thing we're going to do is to create an assignment. Now, because I've just created my class and my students have yet to accept their invitation, I won't be able to show you the full process. So I'm going to switch from my made up classroom here to one that I've been using earlier in the year. And I just want to um, reiterate something I said in the last video about um, topics. Here you can see I use topics in this classroom. And so, for example, if the students wanted to see all the brain gym activities that they've been asked to do, they just click on the brain gym topic. And here we go. And you can see we can scroll down through here that we are, are looking at the brain gym topic. We can click on game design. There should be one, I think. Yes. Um, OK. And so the kids can students can just basically click through. And so can you. Um, whereas if you come all the way back to the stream, what you get is this 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 linear order of all the things that the students are asked to do throughout the entire year. So very quickly it can become very daunting. So the use, I want to reiterate the use of topics um, for you to organize and make sense of your stream. But let's come back to here again. So click on the plus button. And the first thing I want to do is to create an assignment. So I'm going to click on create assignment. So I've come here and I can create an assignment. And as you can see, even though I'm in HPP, HPSPS, I can actually, because I'm the teacher of many classrooms, I can create an assignment and assign it to whichever class I want to send it to. So it doesn't actually matter which class I'm in. But it does for the students, because the students are assigned to this particular class. So I might want to create some differentiation here. So I can, for example, organize my students and I can delete these and say, right, well, I want these, this task to go to these three students, uh, plus this student down here. And so these four students will only see what I've, the assignment I've sent out to them, which enables me to differentiate um, the task and send it to the appropriate students. But in this case, I want to send it to all students. So you need to give it a title. So um, let's call it Brain Gym. A brain gym activity um, and we can add some instructions in here I always like to do this to give some extra clarity so um, I'm gonna just write something now so I've now given my task a title and I've added some instructions we can go down to the next section here um, and these two things are really good so first of all it's topic so we're going to um, click on here and we're going to click make it a brain gym topic so it's searchable within brain gym and the due date, that's really important as well. So we can either set no due date or we use the calendar. And we can set the date for whenever we wish it to be. So obviously I might set this for some date in February. There we go. Um, and we can set the time if we need to, but each of those are optional. You don't need to set that. But it's it's if you want to... Um, create student agency, it helps them it helps them organize themselves about trying to prioritize which task is the most important one. Um, it, and so setting the due date and time can actually act like a traffic light for the students. Traffic light systems, they, with certain tasks they know they've got more time on, and certain other tasks are more pressing. So those, those are entirely up to you. I'm going to delete those, I don't need those. So once we set this up, we now need to add some content. And the, as, um, as I showed in an earlier video, you can add videos if you want to. You can add all four of these options here to actually make the task as rich as possible. But I'm going to show you, first of all, how to add content from your Google Drive. So I've got some tasks I've already created here. Here's the um, blinking LED challenge, which is not a brain gym activity, but it doesn't matter. I've made this task already, and I want to add that. And that's come straight from my drive, so I can come to here. Um, I'm going to add it. Okay, now this is this is very important. Once you've added the content here, over on the right hand side here, you can then set what the students do to do with it. Now 
there is nothing the students need to do in this task um, where they need to actually add content to the resource that I've sent to them. So having it set to students can view file is perfectly fine. However, down here, students can edit file. That's an option. But if you've got 30 students working on the same document, can, it can lead to utter confusion. But it depends how you've organized your task. It may well be that you know only one or two students at a time are working on this. But if you want them to actually use something you've sent to them as a template that you want them to, you might have a bunch of sentence starters, for example, the best thing to send them is to make a copy for each student. Then each student will get a copied version of this, um, which they can write on, and it will not be um, overwritten by any other students. So these versions here are really important. But my students can just view this file and that's okay, but this 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 here can't be overemphasized how important this particular section here is. Obviously, we can add videos, so let's just um, paste my video in here that I've already got. We don't need that, but I'm just going to show you what to do. We can add a file or um, a document, so we can come to my drive again. So let's just add this reflection here. Click add. So you can see how I can add all this content. And finally, we can add a link to a website. So let's just type in here, add link. Now, obviously, um, this is not a real task now because it doesn't ha actually have anything to do with my brain gym activity. It's, it's all over the place. But here you can see we've got examples of what the students need to be um, to have access to in order to complete the task. And finally, when we've done this, we can assign it, but we can we can schedule it or save it as a draft. Now these, um, these three options are very powerful as well. So often I like to prepare tasks in advance. And so if I schedule something, I can decide when it's going to appear in the student stream. So it allows me to trickle out um, programmatically content to the students so they don't get flooded with a whole raft of stuff they can get information at certain times so for example I might have three things that need to go out tomorrow morning and I will set one to go out at nine o'clock so it's ready to go and then the next one might be to come out at a, a different time let's say um, just before morning tea so just 10 25 so that it's prepped and ready for them to go after morning tea etc etc and you just press schedule and you obviously you can choose your dates on here anytime you wish um, and it allows you the teacher to actually control how and when the students will see the content that you've created for them so just click on schedule and so it's now set that for a date and that's now going to appear um, at some point in the future but it doesn't seem to have appeared here and I've made a mistake oh no they need the students need to see it now so I need to click on here, my save posts. Here's the brain gym. I need to click on this and I want to delete my schedule. And I can now reassign it. So I can now just assign it, it needs to go now. Yes, click assign. And so that's how you send content out to the students. And as soon as it comes out, you can you see here that it's been assigned to 12 students but it's not being done, it hasn't been turned in. And that's the focus of the next video.